say something to some of you out there who would think I've been sold a bill of goods. Well, I'm terribly confused. But I've read the one book, and if you read that one book, you're not confused. And I just want to read what I see and what you've missed. I want to say here, now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it. He saw Jerusalem saying, if you had known even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave uh, in you one stone upon another, because you did not know the day of the time of your visitation. And what was he talking about? What was Yeshua talking about? He was talking about 70 CE, 40 years later after he would be hung on the tree. Now what uh, the, the nations should have seen, Israel should have seen, and the nations should have seen, but have missed for 2,000 years. Israel was looking for a Messiah, but they were looking for a Messiah that would su to support their need according to what the leaders had thought, uh, the religious leaders had thought after the, uh, uh, the takeover of, of Rome over Jerusalem and over Israel. That there would be two messiahs, and that one, there would be the son of David, come first to conquer, and then come uh, come again, and come as the son of Joseph and die in battle. Die in the battle of Gog and Magog. That's mentioned in Ezekiel 38 and 39. But if you read uh, there, there is no such thing. All there is is that Israel will defeat Russia. Nothing about a messiah dying there. Yes, it is true that the Messiah will die, that he, he was prophesied to die. But it stands to reason, if you start to really read your scriptures, like uh, Daniel 9, chapter 26, it says that Messiah will be cut off, but not for himself. I mean, he'd be he'd not for anything that he did. He would be killed, not for something that he did. But he would be put to death for others, for the sins of the world. And it stands to reason, if you read your scriptures properly, if you read your Tanakh, uh, your old covenant correctly the Messiah had to come and die first for sin, he had to come and deal with sin it was written in the Brit Kadashah that what the, the law couldn't do and that it was weak through the flesh in Romans chapter 8 that God in sending his Messiah in the form of, uh, of, of man in the form of sinful flesh condemned sin in the flesh Now you go and read, you talk about Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53 that says he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised by our iniquities, and by his stripes we are healed. And you want to say that that uh, chapter refers to Israel, but it doesn't stand. How can it be said when uh, it says by his stripes we are healed, the Jewish people suffered, but the nations have suffered also. Just think about in the last century, a nation rose, raised its hands against the Jewish people. That was a divided, occupied country for almost half of the last century. You can only see it in its own Messiah's sufferings that were healed, that the nations are healed. And I'll just say with this, yes, the Jews and Jewish people have been the scapegoats for uh, a long time, but God himself, he may want you, the Mashiach, to be the scapegoat for all of us, to be the one to die in our place like the scapegoat uh, in the Torah, who carried away our sins into the wilderness. And now he's, he, the uh, song says, buried, he carried my, our sins far away, rising, he justified freely forever. So it isn't the Jewish people suffering uh, in Isaiah 53, it's the Messiah's suffering. And read it correctly, Messiah had to come, die, come and die first for sin. Isaiah 9, I mean, excuse me, Daniel chapter 9, 25 and 26. He had to die first for sin, and then he will come and conquer the nations.